Hey y'all. Um, I hope that you enjoyed my um, hot mess of a beach cup alcohol ink where it exploded. I did get that off, so we're good to go there. Um, I used a fast orange or something like that. Anyways, I got the alcohol ink off. Um, this is what the cup looks like. I did all three. Um, for the next portion, what we need to do is we need to get, see which ones I've already done here, because I did go through and clean up some of these already. Um, any epoxy, this one, okay. So any epoxy that could have gotten on the lip right here, you want to make sure that is completely gone um, and it's a clean surface that your tumbler shield is going to be able to go on. So again, we are recreating this tumbler. So this one I have not done yet. I take my X-Acto knife, I flip the blade so it's facing this direction. I put it in. My X-Acto knife does have like a soft rubber edge. That way I'm not gouging the side of my tumbler as I go around. Um, I know I've tried other X-Acto knives and this is the one that doesn't leave any kind of issues on there. So I literally go through and any epoxy that, or even the um, tacket glue if it happened to get in, in there, anything that's going to prevent my plastic shield from being able to have a secure hold, I want to get this off. Also, um, this is also important because when you do slide on your plastic shield, you want to make sure that it's going to lock in place 100%. If there's anything in there preventing it from snapping it down in place and actually getting really tight. So this is how thin I'm getting this out. This style tumbler is a lot of work. There's a lot of steps to it and there's a lot of waiting times in between steps. So I did this epoxy two days ago and I let it sit, I let it cure. Um, I probably could have came in here yesterday and done this, but I don't want any issues on this part of the cup. No fingerprints, nothing like that. Um, anytime you add any kind of medium to your epoxy, especially like alcohol inks, it can actually change the way that your cup cures. Um, it can cause fish eyes, anytime you do anything like that. So straight epoxy, um, you may not have to wait as long, but when you start to add mediums into your epoxy or onto your epoxy, just know that it can affect the outcome of the cup and the cure time. So all I'm doing right here is I'm literally going around and you can kind of hear that metal sound. That means it's clean and my knife is not getting stuck on anything. If it's not getting stuck, that means I've got it cleared. So these ones aren't gonna be perfect because up here is where my alcohol ink exploded. Um, so there is some alcohol, tiny little pieces. Um, goes with the imperfections of making these cups. Um, I could probably sit and really try to get any of that stuff off, but it doesn't hurt my feelings. I think it just adds a little bit of character. Um, I did just notice a few pieces of epoxy on my little screw on part. So I'm just gonna nick those off really quick while I have it. So the biggest thing is, is this portion is going to be encased in a liquid. So you wanna make sure that you've gotten your epoxy up over your glitter good so it can't get into the seal and just over the rim here, barely over the rim here is where I go to make sure it's sealed from the bottom as well. So I'm not gonna have anything that's going to get in there and break it and get into this seal. 
you can always do little test fits, making sure that nothing's gonna get in the way and that your plastic is going to go on smooth and even. I'm going to be showing you how I attach my plastic onto my acrylic onto these bases. The one thing I will say is that it's this time, whatever is on the inside of this, it's going to stay there forever. So make sure you clean it off. That's why when I unbox them, I put them back and I keep them away and out of the, you know, away from all the elements in my room. Um, but I can go through and I can take a little bit of rubbing alcohol, get these nice and clean on the inside. And that way when I'm applying my shields, oh, wrong size cup. <laughs> that way when I'm applying my shields on, um, I know everything is gonna be fine. So I'll show you how I apply these now. Hey you guys. Um, so we are at the part where we are gonna start putting our plastic um, acrylic covers on all of our cups. I've got my epoxy. I literally pour my epoxy on a clear plate that I purchased, um, like a 25 or 30 pack from Walmart. So, and as with so many things in life, I do have to work quick because I'm working with epoxy and I just coated a bunch of cups. So, hyper towel. is I take my clear, I put it on the plate, and I spin it. And I'm just getting epoxy on the little rim that's here. And then very carefully, I'm going to slide this on top of there. Um, trying not to touch the sides. You don't want to touch the sides. I'm going to push that down. I'm going to tighten my lid on. And I have a little piece of wax paper that's down right here. Um, because epoxy is going to want to come out of the um, sides of this when you do it this way. Sorry, it's, this is a major step because if you don't get this sealed properly, then your cup could leak. So I'm not going to be as talkative. So I'm getting it on the outside and the inside. This step is extremely important that you make sure that this is coated and covered really nicely. Otherwise, like I said, leaking is not something that you want to have happen at this junction of the game.
So I have two other cups that I'm working on for a different order, but I'm going to go on ahead while I have this epoxy that I'm using and get these shells, acrylics, whatever you want to call them. So this one is just a plain white base with um, tack it over it that I just did. And this is a big 30 ounce one. And we're just going to use up what's left of this epoxy. Now I have done this with UV resin. Um, if you're only doing like one cup at a time. Um, make sure that your UV is cured really good um, if you're going to try that way. I've seen other folks have used silicone. I did try it. It did not work for me um, for this portion of it, but got to figure out what works for you when it comes to attaching these pieces. Once all these pieces are attached, um, these cups will sit for your, um, whatever your recommended cure time is, is how long you're gonna have these cups sit. So if you make molds and you have a little bit of epoxy that's left, feel free, make some molds, do something fun. Now I go through and anywhere that the epoxy has kind of dripped out, you can kind of see it. I wipe it off with a paper towel. And the first one is always the gooeyest because that's where I have the most epoxy. Obviously, wear your proper PPE. Um, I have a pretty ventilated space that I work in, even though it doesn't look like it from behind me. I've got my uh, plastic Dexter sheet going on. That actually came about um, working on a lot of black, entirely black cups, and. I was fighting little baby dust particles like it was nobody's business and I couldn't handle it anymore. So um, I split my room, put all my cup turners right next to each other and um, made it so I don't even glitter in there anymore to be honest with you. It's just completely separate area. Um, so what you just saw me spray was alcohol and then I wipe it until I can feel it smooth. This is just gonna come over to my little staging area. It's gonna sit now. I do have a piece of wax paper down on my little staging area because these are gonna sit and I'm gonna be letting this epoxy that I just used to attach this to fully cure. So a couple days, it's gonna just sit there and I'm just going to keep it out of the way. Um, yes, there are some, you know, fast cure epoxies out there. Um, would I recommend rushing this process? No, don't rush it. Um, remember, you're putting a liquid inside here. So take it all the way back to, you know, can you soak a tumbler? Should you soak a tumbler? You know, you're putting liquid inside this. So, speeding up the process is not gonna get you anywhere.
these cups take several days in between steps just for each individual step to properly cure. Some people leave the epoxy around the rim as an extra way of sealing it. It depends on how you are, uh, without wiping it as much as I am, they'll just do like a quick wipe around and they'll use that epoxy to actually seal up that. Depends on what style cup you're making when you're doing this, you know, if you're doing a peekaboo, if you're doing whatever style you're doing. So, I'm going to get rid of my sticky paper. And again, we are making this cup. And I also am putting in little pieces of the um, thermochromatic powder cup. So you can see kind of both. And these are just going to sit now. So what I meant by different styles, so if I left epoxy here at this top of this and here at the bottom, I'm not going to get as smooth of a finish around this cup whenever I go through and do it. So you want to make sure whatever style you're doing your cup in, that whatever is going to be seen, you know, that that's what the customer is going to see. So just keep that in mind as far as your cleaning process. Again. Uh, a lot of this stuff is personal preference when it comes to how you make these, um, whether that be the style of half you use, how long you want to make it, you know, how long you're going to let it sit, um, if you're going to use a fast set, if you're going to use UV resin, um, which I have done, um, or if you plan on um, using silicone. So just follow whichever style you're doing it, follow that manufacturer manufacturer's recommendation before you even go to try and add your liquid in um, once that's set what we're going to do is a little bit of a leak test we're going to make sure that nothing is coming out i'm um, just going to pour a little bit at the bottom and as long as it passes then we'll move on to the next step okay you guys i'm back and i'm mixing together my liquid that I put on the inside of my snow globe tumblers. Um, everybody has a different preference for liquids. Um, depends on your flow that you want. Depends on um, whatever you feel most comfortable with. So I use a one-to-one -one ratio. So this is just vegetable glycerin. I purchased it on Amazon. This is distilled water. And I do go up past the actual four cup mark. And I'm just using a rubber batter thing. If I cooked, I'd know spatula. It's not even a spatula. So I'm just gonna mix this. And if you mix it super fast, you're gonna get a lot more bubbles. Um, I've used a whisk before, just depends on whatever I have lying around. Um, I don't obviously want that. I want it to be crystal clear. So you just keep mixing until it is crystal clear. super entertaining, right? This is the portion of the uh, tutorial. Feel free to speed up. 
once it's crystal clear, I have these little squeeze condiment bottles, whatever you want to call them. Um, I This amount will fill up all of these bottles. Seven, six, six of these bottles. Um, and usually a 20 ounce cup is going to take just shy of a full bottle. Um, so I've got one, two, three, four. I have seven snow globes to fill. Um, two of them are 30 ounce ones. So there's a very good chance that I'm actually going to have to mix a whole nother batch together. Um, I do kind of save my batches. So once it's mixed together, um, this bottle is partially filled. Um, I don't discard it. I leave it in there. Um, in my head, it's gassing out really well while it sits there and waits for me to use it. I've had no issues doing it this way, but obviously do whatever you feel comfortable with. If you feel like just mixing together what you need to do with a certain amount of cups that you're working on or a cup at a time, do that. There's gonna be so many different ways to make a cup and what works for one maker may not work for another maker. It's just kinda of one of those really weird things about tumblers. Just like some epoxies work amazing for some people, for other people they just don't work. So, I don't think there's any one you know, rule of thumb for any one particular cup. It's just figuring it all out. Trial and error. So as you can see, I'm not picking anything up. My mixture is clear. I have down wax paper on my surface because if I'm doing anything, if I'm going to use this surface to do any decals or anything like that, the last thing I want is this glycerin water mixture or baby oil glycerin mixture to get on my cups, my decals. These are kind of grimy now, um, very slippery. And so that way when I'm done, I can just grab my little bit of wax paper and clean it up and walk away. I still will alcohol down my entire work area before I come in with my next project, but sometimes having designated stations for the different projects you're doing is super helpful because then if you have an area of your room that you glitter in, your glitter is kind of contained. If you have an area that you do decaling in. Um, I used to epoxy and glitter and everything all in the same area. And when you start working with cups that are solid cups or no glitter cups, you learn really quick that you want to keep those areas separate. Put my lids on. Oh God. You guys know, you can't watch a tutorial with me without me making some kind of a mess. I swear I am prone to making huge messes. And this isn't going to be one of those quick cleanup messes. This is going to take some time. Because it's glycerin water, so it's like oily.
And this, you guys, is why I'm, I'm like, not a big deal tumbler maker. I'm your klutzy tumbler maker. I show you all the wrong ways of doing stuff. I'm just going to grab our wax paper up. We're going to attempt to dry this area off. I'm probably going to go slipping and sliding when I get upstairs. Glycerin water mixtures. All right, I'm gonna finish cleaning up and I'm gonna come back and show you um, how we add our glitter and do our first seal on the cups. Hey guys, I'm back. It's semi clean, is what it is. Um, so we are gonna go through and we're gonna glitter in these cups. Now for time purposes, I did start to put glitter in a lot of them. Um, so I'm only gonna really glitter in one cup with you guys. Um, I get my shape glitters from kind of all over, wherever I can find it. I love supporting all different kinds of businesses. Um, so I got some dolphins from Posh Glitter. The dolphins were not in the original beach cup that I did because I didn't have dolphins yet. Just grab my tweezer and drop them in. Those are my dolphins. From Royal Glam and Glitter, I have a Caribbean Cruise that I purchased. Um, and these are just beautiful holographic-y honeycomb shaped. I just love them. I think they're beautiful for this cup. Um, from Mr. Nola's Glitter, I have just the O's, loopy O's. This is in holographic silver. I also have a blue and a pearl essent, but trying to stay true to form here. This is the color I'm pretty sure I used on the original beach cup. When adding your shape glitters or other glitters, the biggest thing is just keeping it as whimsical as you possibly can. Um, I don't go crazy, but just enough so that when it's shaken up, it gives that feeling of, oh. Um, Hobby Lobby, this is just jumbo diamonds. Um, nothing grand or spectacular about them. And they did not dye my, um, they didn't change the, the color of my fluids in my cup, so I'll give that as a win. From, oh, you guys, I just dumped some glitter. I just can't. I just can't. I can't win. Let me scooch this, all this stuff out of your way. Okay. Freaking fantastic. The good news is, is that it's, it's a chunky glitter. The bad news is, is, you know, it's glitter. So, well, we're just going to add some of this guy in. And, you know, we'll clean up the rest. This is Water Malone from the glitter guy. Um, the skulls I made, 
I cut them out with party foil and that is what's going in the black looking tumbler. Which I have put in there. I also added the gold anchors from Posh Glitter in this style tumbler. So that's already taken care of. And for my beach, I'm just, I'm a hot mess now. You know, it's something throws you off your game. So I'm going to be going through and adding in. These are my shells. Um, I downloaded a file and used my party foil and I cut my own shells. Um, Cause I could not find, I couldn't find exactly what I was looking for. So when I can't find what I'm looking for, I will just go through and start making it myself. But I love, love supporting other small businesses. Sometimes though, you just got to do the stuff yourself. No big deal. When I was banging just then, all I'm doing is scooching down glitter, trying to make it drop down. There's no fluids in this right now, so not a big deal. Before you add your glitter, make sure you've already gone through and done your, um, your leak test. You want to make sure that you do not have... Uh, any of your liquid that is going to pour out of the bottom. Probably should have showed that, but you know, I'm over here dumping stuff out all over the place. I don't currently sell any kind of the shape glitters. Um, I, I have been reached out to to make some for some people, which I will do. Um, but I don't typically, you know, I don't sell. I'm not a I'm not a glitter seller, so. When you're adding in your glitter, um, go around and add it all over kind of sporadically. Um, that kind of prevents it from bunching up too. Um, some people, when they do these cups, they individually place the glitter. I just grab them by the piles and stick them in and then give the cup a decent shake. Okay, that should be good. See if I'm missing anything. I think I got it all. Um, let's see if I can't. Well, that's fantastic. We're just going to add a little bit more and I'm going to well, that's how come I didn't do it the first time. That's why I dumped it out. I did not pull out the little... Oh! We're going to use it as a scooper. You know? Sometimes in life, you just got to roll with the punches. As I mentioned... What would a tutorial with me be if I did not continue to mess up? It would be boring. Right? It would be boring. As you can hear, I'm pretty um, rough with my tumblers. 
um, maybe overly trusting in the seal that I've given them. So we've got all of our glitters in here. Did I forget to put you guys? I'm like, why does that look so bare? Because I didn't add any dolphins. up and we're just going to put them in their cup. There we go. Alright. I'm just kind of doing a little bit of a lunch over. And right now it doesn't look like there's a lot of glitter in there, but just know that it does fall. So I'm feeling like we should be good. I'm gonna clean up my glitter that I dumped out and start back over with another clean work surface. All right, you guys, I'm back. And we are at the portion where um, I just get to fill cups. So I have one of these cups that I have to get filled. Um, this is for a different order, so just stand by while I fill this guy up. This was a full um, one of these full bottles and that's how much is left after a 30 ounce tumbler. I'm just going to scooch these. So all I'm going to do is I'm going to go around. As I'm going around, I'm spinning it and I am dropping that glitter down. When you go like that, that's where you get your bubbles. And obviously you really don't want those little tiny bubbles. Okay. That is another 30 ounce tumbler. I think there's one more around here, right here. Again, I just go around. And as these bottles empty out, put them aside. should warn you one of my little bottles here has like a, a like a leak at the lid so you're probably I'm probably gonna blister and go everywhere but I feel like you know what else could go wrong nothing Again, I've already done my leak test on these, so you want to make sure nothing's coming out from the bottom here when you do your leak test. Um, you can use just plain distilled water. Just make sure when you do your leak test that you empty that stuff out. And um, you're gonna see, you're gonna be able to watch right now as the glitter is gonna go up and down on these. I don't know why it happens, but it does. Oh, well, we just shot stuff all over that cup.
Okay. And I have one more. Hopefully I have enough mixed. Again, if I don't, I can always mix another round. But I think that will be okay. And I have one little bottle left. This is the one that I dumped all over the place. If you've been tuning in here to this here tutorial, I pretty much am showing you what to do right and what to do wrong because I've made about a bajillion goofy mistakes in doing these. So we've got all of our cups. This one looks like it's leaking. It's because I squirted stuff. These ones on this side are going to be those color changing thermochromatic powder cups. Um, we'll just set that guy a little bit aside. Um, kind of out of light, sight. So if you have cups that have bubbles, you can take alcohol and you can do a spritz. Don't go nuts. Don't go nuts with it. A spritz, that's all you need. Take your paper towels and you're gonna wanna make sure, again, you want nothing on this stainless steel portion. And we will go through and clean the outside before we do any epoxy or anything, but this stuff's just going to have to sit, so. For the gassing off portion of this, um, do whatever you normally do. If you let it gas off for an hour, five hours, ten hours three days, whatever you feel comfortable that works for you. So all these little rim areas are cleaned up. And now you can use your little tool and you can actually push down some of these shape glitters and make them go down. That way they don't get stuck in your silicone and um, it's just a waste of a shape. Another reason why it's important to get them pushed down is because if your shapes get stuck in the silicone that you use to go around here, um, it very well could be where it puts it part of the tumbler where the seal isn't good. Just something to keep in mind. So I just go down, I try to push down what I, well, I can. Some is gonna float. There's really no stopping it. I've used the same batch of same fluid, so I'm not super worried about any kind of cross-contamination or anything like that. And um, when you're working on these cups, it is imperative you use distilled water, so please make sure you're doing that. Water droplets off. All right. 
keep these guys nice and dry. And we'll be back and I will show you how we do the silicone portion. Okay, you guys, this is a tiny little pro tip on working with these cups. Uh, I've got gloves on finally. I know everybody's like, Jeep, stop time. Maybe you have it, maybe you don't. Brake cleaner. It shoots. It removes grease. oil and residue a fairly fairly good chance that it's going to um, not smell good If you use this to clean up your bottom pieces, it will save your life with frustration. So, just thought that I would share that little tidbit. Okay, you guys. We are going to seal these cups with silicone. I use the advanced silicone. Um, it says that it's like rain ready in 30 minutes. I still let it sit, but this is how I do it. Um, obviously, if you know a different way to seal these, you do it that way. Um, all I'm going to do Try to scooch these cups without the liquid coming out. Okay. Um, these are filled just below the um, stainless steel line. Just know that if you put in too much silicone, your liquid is going to eventually want to come up. And then I go through and I do all of mine at one time and then I come back. Move them carefully if you're doing more than one. You really don't want your glycerin, baby oil, uh, whatever mixture of fluid that you have in there, you really don't want it to get on that stainless steel portion. I'm going to say that and then I'm going to at some point probably mess up.
silicone does have an odor to it, so obviously wearing your PPE, um, is something you should do. Now there is a way to pull out the black plastic piece that has the screw portion and then you can fill these cups up all the way. I personally don't uh, um, like doing it that way and the main reason I don't like doing it that way is because I'm dealing with shape glitter that some of it's pretty big. And the last thing that I want to do is have my shapes get stuck down at the bottom and not have any flow or movement. So sealing off this little bottom area prevents them from coming into this, we're going to call it void space. This is my baby oil one. Uh, anybody that's done any of the baby oil or... Um, blood drip cups, you know that baby oil is probably the least fun for sealing, in my opinion, but it's just me. And we're just going to add a little bit more here and there on a couple of these guys. Nothing too crazy. Make sure you release this portion. I use a little screw and I stick it in. Keep it from blobbing out and losing all that silicone. Silicone is one of those things that has gone up in price. Um, keep that in mind when you're making your tumblers, when you're thinking about like the cost of all your products. Um, I want to say, depending on the brand you get, I've gotten silicone for as cheap as like $6 and I've paid as much as like 10 or 11 All I'm doing now is going around and Just making sure that I don't have any air pockets, anything like that. No liquids coming out. And I stay away from the screw portion. That's very important. Stay away from that little screw guy because you will need him to put your bottom back on your cup. And I personally think that the advanced silicone doesn't smell as bad as the regular silicone. So that is part of the reason why I do prefer it. This is one of those super, super important parts of doing this tumbler because you do not want any liquid coming out before you put your bottom on. So 
So before we actually attach our bottom to the, our cup, we will do another leak test. Um, making sure all, my, all of our liquid is staying in. Again, all I'm doing is pushing the silicone getting it tight to my acrylic, making sure there's no fluids. I will um, pick you guys up and show you what the insides of these look like because I know my angle is probably horrible and you're like, oh, she's just pushing around silicone. Sweet. I am not, you know, I'm not a professional tumbler, tutorial maker. Just trying to be helpful when it comes to this style tumbler. Okay. So we're gonna set that guy down. I believe I got all of them. Did I do that one? trying to flip you and I hung you up. Okay, so this is what the bottom should look like, at least the way I do it. And these are going to sit and cure before I continue on with any more steps. Hey you guys, it is morning. Um, I let this sit all night long. When you touch your silicone, it should be hard. It should be solid, it should be hard. Um, it should move. To do your drip test, all you do is flip it upside down. You wanna make sure nothing's coming out of this bottom portion. You've already done your drip test up top. So I take every cup and you can shake them, bang them, however violent you want to be to make sure that no liquid is going to come out of the bottom of these cups. Because if you have problems at this point, you're going to continue to have problems. So nothing should be coming out. This has uh, baby oil and uh, just glycerin in it. So once you're sure that your seals are good, I have my 20 ounce bottoms. So I'm gonna separate these cups by 20 ounces.
I have my 30 ounce bottoms and I have my 20 ounce skinnies. Um, these guys come with little freebie straws inside. I pull them out because um, once these are sealed up, there's no getting them back. So I'm going to take my screw out of my silicone. Push this tight. That's going to push your pressure. I fill in the top hole. And I fill in the extra space. Top hole. Extra space. Now, even though I know it's not leaking, um, some may think it's excessive to fill in that extra space. But I want nothing to happen to these cups once they leave my home. And that guy's empty. Um, in case you didn't know how to open one, this is good. Your little tool, uh, caught gun, will have a little guy that will cut the tip off. I usually cut twice. There should be, and this has got old silicone on it, but there should be a little metal, metal piece. And you're going to drive it and push it just to bust that open. When you put it in your gun, there's like a little groove that it sits in. Every gun's a little bit different, but if I squeeze this, push this button down, it pushes this forward and it's locked in. Uh, a pump or two will get this to start coming out and you just squeeze. This is a brand new um, bottle now, so the silicone is going to want to continue, you'll see right there, to come out. For the lids, I just went around my screw, so all I do is I go around this little inside rim. Again, maybe excessive, but um, I do not want any leaking. So there's a little groove in there, and I'm just going around that little groove. Nothing crazy. Some people use epoxy at this point in the game to go around the screw and grow around the rim. Um, silicone's been working fine for me, so I'm, that's what I'm going to stick with. Um, with these cups, once you find a way that works for you, you end up kind of sticking with it. Make sure to release the pressure off your gun, otherwise the silicone will continue to come out. And then put your screw back in. And that's how I store it. All I'm gonna do here is just scooch this stuff, flatten it out a little bit, nothing in particular. Get it around the edges there, pull it all the way. And like I said, this could 100% be excessive, um, but kind of a better safe than sorry kind of person. I know the cup isn't leaking or dripping, but you never know.
you have a good amount of time to work with this stuff um, before it's fully, like it, would, it says it's rainproof in 30 minutes, but in my opinion, I think you still have a really good time that you can work with this stuff, so I'm okay with however many cups I'm doing at a time. Once you get this portion done, these are going to sit. And then you can start your design, whatever that looks like that you plan on doing. I just go around and get this on the rim. Sure to live for a second there. Wouldn't you know I might have done a step without making a complete mess or screwing anything up? If you're sensitive to chemicals, I would wear gloves, um, proper PPE. So now all we're going to start doing is screwing them on. Cups like these, it's just better safe to be better be safe than sorry. can let these sit. Um, usually I'll let these sit for about an hour and then I'll go ahead and design them. Because I've already let the actual silicone part that sealed the cup sit. But if you want to let it sit for another 24, go ahead. Right now I'm wiping off any silicone that may have came out from screwing it on. These will get wiped down a lot of times before 
they actually go into their design phase because any glycerin, any silicone, anything that's on these cups, any oils is going to cause you nothing but problems and you can 100% feel it on these cups. So this is just alcohol. I'm going to let these sit, like I said, for approximately an hour or so, and then I will go into the design phase, final design phase, on these two different style cups, and we will go to epoxy, and then tutorial's done. Hey, you guys. We are at the final step of these tumblers. And forgive me on the beach ones, um, I thought I was recording and I was not, uh, or my phone was being stupid, one of two. Um, basically, all I do for the bottom portion of those cups is the power wash method with a white paint, and then um, I go over that with some glitter on the bottom, and I'll give you a close-up view in a second. Now, all of these cups have gotten a coat of epoxy. The three on this end, I'm not going to be doing anything with. I have my gloves on because we know how my alcohol ink did the other day. Um, I did not go as dark with my thermochromatic powder, plus I've got the heat sitting on these things, so I can see where my skull is, and all I'm doing, again, these are already epoxied, is I'm going to drop some alcohol links on the bottoms staying below the skull area this color is just lake blue that I'm using right now I'm going to put some stream on here. Have some ocean blue. And some of these probably look really similar to each other. You can see this one is repelling in a few spots. Um, not going to be the end of the world. I'm just going for the wave effect right now and when I get to my next layers of epoxy, they'll all clear out.
This is just some white. Mixed in with my epoxy. Wait for it to come back around. Now you can hit these with heat if you want to. Um, kind of smooth everything out. Um, let them flow, let them do their thing. Don't mess with them too, too much. And that'll give you that water effect. Um, the colors will mix in as they're continuing to spin. So try to flip you guys. And again, this is the beach one. Like I said, I did the power wash method with white down here, coating the power wash right here. That way when I sprayed it, it would be fine. And then I just did some little bit of glitter at the bottom for the sand. I think that pretty much wraps up the tutorial, you guys. Thanks you guys so much for liking everything. And if you have questions, let me know.